As we went to air tonight, more than 50 hours into the fight, firefighters say the blaze at the International Convention Centre in Auckland's CBD is under control. But they're still hosing down hot spots and it isn't over yet. If you're listening, we're just taking live pictures from our camera in Hobson Street where we can see there are cherry pickers on the skyline there and firefighters are working from above the roof of the convention centre. They're pouring water onto the hot spots. I'm told by our our reporter down there, there's still a slight chemical smell in the air and the cordons are still in place around that central city area. If you're watching, you can see, wow, litres and litres of water being projected onto the ceiling. Some of that is running onto the roof, running off down to the side of the buildings into the drains, which brings us to the 8 million litres of possibly contaminated water that has flooded the basement car park of Sky City. The question now is, what are they going to do with that water? Now, Sky City has confirmed that it will compensate the owners of the vehicles that are parked in that basement car park. The casino will reopen for business business tonight and Sky's restaurants will open their doors tomorrow but it could be weeks before the scene of the fire itself is cleared and work is just beginning to ensure that the site is structurally safe. Reporter Annika Smith and videographer Patrice Allen filed this report. Day three and this week's fire frenzy is only just cooling off. Normally busy streets are quiet and deserted as emergency services continue to work. On the corner of Hobson and Wellesley streets, half a dozen firefighters put down their helmets for a kai and a rest. They've been at it for days now, first fighting an uncontrollable blaze and now working to stamp it out for good. Ōtara Fire Station Senior Station Officer Brendan Irwin says it's been a moving feast. Up until in the middle of the night last night, um, we were letting the fire come towards us um, along the roof line, but our tactics have changed, so any fire that we see, we're actually um, actively putting it out. So there's probably only 20 to 10% left of the roof um, on the Hobson Street side. Mr Irwin is one of four sector commanders in charge of each of the streets surrounding the International Convention Centre. He's looking after three fire trucks with cranes and 30 firefighters on Hobson Street. Mr Irwin says the sheer size of the building isn't the only challenge they've faced. We've got a little bit of an issue that um, because of the waterproofing material on the roof is designed to keep water out. Um, we kind of have to wait for the fire to break through before we can um, hit it with our uh, aerial appliances. The roof's materials have now almost completely burnt out and the site will soon be assessed for structural damage. This afternoon, a drone team moved its gear to a nearby hotel. Thermal imaging cameras were flown up to identify hot spots and flare-ups. It's been a long week for firefighters and there's still no end in sight, with flames flaring up again this afternoon. But New Zealand Professional Firefighters Union Vice President Joe Stanley says the fire could have been put out in a matter of hours. He says firefighters were on the back foot from the start, having only one aerial appliance deployed with two others in the area out of action. Having fit for purpose aerials that had sufficient reach to access the fire in Auckland could have reduced the length of time that we were fighting it and kept firefighters in the community a lot safer. Mr Stanley says the situation is symptomatic of under-resourcing of large appliances needed in big city centres. But Auckland City Area Commander Richard Twomey says that's simply not the case. He says an aerial appliance arrived at the scene within 10 minutes on Tuesday, but it wasn't able to reach the fire. The aerials would have been on top of the roof on the iron. Like I said, the fire was below the iron. Uh, they wouldn't have been able to access it. Um, no, it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have changed the tactics or the outcome. Fire hoses are still pouring water onto the site from all angles as a crew fights internally from the fifth floor. Equipment has also been hauled from ports of Auckland to pump out millions of litres of water flooding the basement of the building. Almost 100 cars belonging to Sky City employees sit water damaged in the convention centre's car park. Sky City has confirmed it will cover water damage costs and employees will be fully compensated.
Mr Irwin says the flooded scene hasn't dampened staff morale. He says hordes of public donations, from flat whites to filled rolls, have been very welcome. They're all in good spirits. Um, yeah, it was a long day yesterday, but um, we've refreshed our crews um, and yeah, everyone's in good spirits and the public are being really uh, friendly and helpful as well. Um, keeping out of the cities helped with us getting staff and equipment in. Mr Irwin's crew will have a shift change over this afternoon to refresh firefighting staff. Cordons will likely be pulled back over the coming days, but the next recovery phase is far from over. Itamaki Makoto, Motehotaka o te Ahiahine, Ko Anika Smith Ahoe.